Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk. As you can see, I'm not Old Trafford. We're in the studio. We're in the bar, but don't worry. I'm also having a brew. Uh, do get involved in the comments because it's live. Uh, and as usual of late, the sort of the talk this morning in the papers centers around Eduardo Camavinga. So we'll be getting to him a little bit later on. But first, we've got a bit of David De Gea news as well. Um, David De Gea and obviously Dean Henderson. I call him John Henderson. Dean Henderson almost still uncertain as to who is definitely going to be the number one next season. Most people would argue that Dean Henderson is now the the more likely of the two to be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's preferred number one. Although Adam McCall was making the point the other day that maybe even Tom Eaton could come in and be given the number one spot. I doubt it because he's come in. I know he's been cu- he's come in, but everyone expects him to be a backup. Well, who knows? Yeah, but apparently uh, David De Gea is poised to make a decision Um on his future with Manchester United, of whether he is going to leave Manchester United, as some people expect, or he's going to stay um, and fight for his position. Um, because according to some reports, um, he's actually... Det- um, apologies there, if you uh, there was a little bit of a technical issue. Gremlins in the machine, as you say. Um, yeah, it looks like David De Gea could be set to sort of fight for his place. Now, don't mind that. Fully respect if, if players want to stay at the club and they want to fight for their place. I just don't know how successful he's going to be. We need David De Gea of old, but we've been saying that now for for me for about three years since the World Cup, maybe in um, in 2018, would we argue that his form has been a bit off the boil? A bit off the boil is an understatement. Let's put it this way. If David De Gea plays as well as we know he can consistently, Dean Henderson doesn't get a look in. You don't drop David De Gea for Dean Henderson. No respect to Dean Henderson if David De Gea is playing as well as he can. The only reason Dean Henderson managed to get himself in a position where he was pretty much the number one, was because David De Gea's form left him. It deserted him. And it wasn't just over like a six-month period where you can go, all right, he's in a bit of a funk. He'll come out of it. It was pretty much two seasons, maybe even two and a half. I go back to the Spurs game at Wembley where Marcus got that goal and we beat them 1-0. Ever since that, I mean, he was magnificent that day. One of the best ever goalkeeping performances we've seen in a Manchester United shirt and probably, in the, you know, in, in, in the history of the Premier League, it was that good. Everyone was raving about it. Um, it was just unbeatable but since then there's been so many instances where it's just not been what we're used to from David De Gea I'm not going to go list list them all but you know the games I'm talking about where it's not just like could he have done better there it's like clangers almost so it might be time for him to move on but he doesn't want to he wants to stay and fight for his place if he does want to fight for his place and he recaptures his form we've seen it with Jesse Lingard whose form deserted him I know he went to West Ham but he's showed what he's made of. Maybe David De Gea could do the same as well. Get involved in the comments. Let us know what you think. It's a very divisive subject, this, because we spoke about this the other night uh, when we were doing transfers live. Some people still think, you know, David De Gea is the man and he should stay at the club. Others, like Dean Henderson, has is, is, is got to be given a chance. Um, personally, I'd probably go with Dean Henderson, though. It's close. I think David De Gea has made too many mistakes over the last couple of years. But I do still think the jury's out on Dean Henderson. I don't think it's set in stone that he's the answer. There may well be, you know, another way, whether that's Tom Heaton or someone else. Because Dean Henderson has had a couple of games where you question him. You know, Sheffield United away was an obvious one. One or two others, the one in the Europa League, one the way the ball more, more or less went through his hands. So, yeah, we'll have to sort of keep an eye on that, see what happens. Maybe it's one for Oligan and Solskjaer to sort out in pre-season. Uh, let us know what you think. Would you prefer Dean Henderson or David De Gea? Do you think Tom Eaton's got a chance, any chance whatsoever, of coming in um, and being number one for Manchester United? It's unlikely, isn't it? I think he's where's he gone from Villa's reserves to Manchester United's first team. Doesn't usually happen that way, but we'll we'll wait and see. Hit the like button as well. Give us a like um, and get involved in the chat. I'll go into some of the couple of the chats here now. Um, someone saying the uh, the Gamba Pradhan says David has fallen off a cliff. Um, Stephen Hobbin disagrees though. He's saying that Harsh the hey, uh, didn't do a lot wrong last season. I don't know though. I don't. You know, I didn't do a lot wrong, but there were games, the Everton game, for example, where he was, he was pretty dreadful. One, let's not let's not sugarcoat it. I mean, I personally think he was at fault for all three of their goals. Um, so th- there's games where you look at him, you go, that's not the David de Gea we've come to love and respect. Um, I'll move on anyway to incomings. Camavinga. Now, this is one that seems to be gathering a little bit of momentum over the last couple of weeks, well, last week or so, really, isn't it? where it looks like United could be get to, set to get the uh, run midfielder for around €30 million, Euros, which would be an absolute bargain for an 18-year-old who's already played about 95 top flight games or professional games, I should say. Uh, but, lo and behold, we've got competition from Chelsea. 
Um, he's already been linked as well, Camavinga, with Real Madrid, with Bayern Munich, uh, with PSG, as every single player on the planet is. But now it seems Chelsea are in for him as well. Um, some reports that Chelsea are ready to rival United for the signing of France. Uh, France, Fra France. I don't know why I tried to do that. Sounds like Joey Bart in France. Hello, I am glad to be here. Sorry, I apologise for that. Uh, France and Ron, teenager Eduardo Cam Camavinga. Um, so we could be going toe to toe with Chelsea, which let's face facts, no one really wants to do that in the transfer market, dear, because they've got lots and lots of money and an owner that's willing to spend lots and lots of money whilst we've got the Glazers. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. His contract is due to run out, so that's why he's only. 30 million euros, which, being honest, is a bargain in, in modern day football. 30, 30 million euros, it doesn't get you, you look if you can get a top flight footballer for that of any caliber, let alone someone like Camavinga, who's one of the most sought after teenagers on the planet. So we'll wait and see. I mean, the, 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 the big sort of selling point here is whether, or the, the sort of main reason that Camavinga is going to come to Manchester United isn't for me going to be whether we pay the most money for him, it's going to be whether the player himself wants to come to Manchester United. Now the issue you have when you go sort of head to head with someone like Chelsea isn't just the money they can offer him as a wage. United are willing to pay big money on wages, especially for players we've not spent that much on, Alexis Sanchez for example, but some players want to live in London for example. They might, they might feel that Chelsea's a better fit. Chelsea are the, uh, the Champions League winners. He, that may be an issue. I think, you know, you look go back all the way to the Eden Hazard transfer when we were trying to get him. There was all these mitigating circumstances living in London. They were the uh, European champions at the time, the Champions League winners at the time. I think it may have come down to, to agents' fees with that one, but you have to look at it and go, that may be more attractive to him, going to live in London and playing for the uh, European champions. I know it shouldn't because Manchester United are just a bigger club than Chelsea. They're just let's they are. Let's just face facts. Um, and I'd love to see him at Manchester United. He may look at it and go, "We've got Paul Pogba at the minute, anyway. We've got Andy Martial, another Frenchman. Maybe get a little bit of a French vibe going on. Maybe we'll be having adding Raphael Varane. Maybe that could appeal to him. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But it's going to be a tough one if you go in head to head with Chelsea, um, which just adds a little bit more of a twist in the tail, doesn't it? From a transfer that a few days ago really looked uh, to be happening. And now it's like, mm, it's not so sure. It's going to be difficult to get Varane and Camavinga. I'll get to Varane later on. Uh, and Camavinga, but we'll wait and see. Uh, United Forever podcast in the Super Chat says, uh, if I manage to make it back to UK this summer, <laughs> can I give you a kiss on top of your head for good luck? COVID re restrictions out the window soon. Do you remember it was Laurent Blanc, wasn't it? And uh, Fabian Barthes, as he used to do that before the uh, France games in the World Cup, he used to kiss his head. Um... Can you give me a kiss on the top of my head, mate, if, if you want, really? To be honest with you, I don't think you'd want to. You know, you don't know where my head's been. Um, Santa Notch says, Camavinga at 30 million euros is well worth it for his promise. Seems to be developing the way Bellingham is. Jude Bellingham, absolutely tearing up, isn't he? You know, he's now a England international as well. And he just, I think he's, he's just turned 18, I think, hasn't he, Bellingham? Um, so he's just so, you know done so well for such a youngster. Went to Dortmund, obviously. We were interested in him when he was at Birmingham. He went to Dortmund. A few people thinking, okay, you know, he, he might have to wait a little bit before he makes an impact. Not at all. He's been absolutely outstanding for Dortmund. Helped them to get uh, Champions League football and win the German Cup and has forced his way into the England reckoning as well. It's just, you know, an absolute fairy tale for him. So maybe Camavinga can be that sort of player who, who can come in and, and develop into that sort of, you know kick on in that sort of mould. We'll have to wait and see. Um, right, should we move on? Brandon Williams has been linked with a move, I think it's to Southampton. Um, Brandon Williams, who hasn't really had um, had many games recently, has he? He, he? he had a great first season, Brandon Williams, where he sort of exceeded expectations, came in, ended up playing 36 games um, in his first season in all competitions, 17 in the Premier League, fantastic. Last season, he played 14. So, I'm sure you can do the math yourself. Less than half of his first season, including only four in the Premier League. So he struggled to, to make an impact. He struggled to, to be a regular. He struggled to even be a backup. Alex Tellez is pretty much the backup now for um, for Luke Shaw. And Luke Shaw's not going anywhere as well. And he's you know the best left back on the planet. I think it's pretty much agreed upon now by, by most people. So it looks like Brandon Williams could be getting a move over to Southampton. Um, the reports coming out, a lot of these reports are stemming from uh, the local press in Southampton as well. Usually I think are quite reliable when you go to the local papers from from a, a club that, that's been linked with United or that's got a player's been linked with United. Um, 
and it says here that the, the Southampton are confident that they can secure uh, Brandon Williams on a loan. It seems that United are keen to, for Brandon Williams to go on loan because we want him to get more football. You know, playing four Premier League games last season didn't do him any good. Not when you've played a lot more the season before. You need to keep playing. You need to keep progressing. You don't need to have a season when you play 36 games and then the following season as a, as a youngster, you're playing 17. It doesn't do anyone any good. So, yeah, he looks like he could be going to St. Mary's Makes a lot of sense, and I'd be happy for that. I think he's a Premier League standard player, and I think that's the sort of level you want him to be playing at. I wouldn't like to see him drop down to the Championship or League One, anything like that. Even going abroad, I'm not sure that would suit him. Go to Southampton, do well there, come back in the following season, and you could be the backup to Luke Shaw, or even to Brandon, Willi uh, Brandon Williams, to Ale um, Aaron Wambasaka, because he can play on the right, Brandon Williams. He's actually right-footed. I remember years ago for the academy, him and Ethan Laird used to swap over. It was amazing. Uh, Ethan Laird obviously went to MK Dons, did really well there. Maybe Brandon Williams can do something similar um, to, in terms of getting a low move. Um, and, you know, just, I don't say proving himself. He's only 20. So I think he's a bit harsh when we say oh, he's got to go and prove himself. But I just think he's got to put himself... Um, in the sort of thoughts of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as someone who is good enough for the Premier League and good enough for Manchester United. And let's face facts, if he goes there and does well as a 20-year-old, he should come back and be better and improve because he's only going to get better and he's only a youngster. Um, get involved in the comments, hit that like button, let us know what you think about that move. Um, Degamba Pradhan says, Brandon eclipsed Luke the first season but needs to bulk up. This possessed far too easily. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure. I think he's he's not the biggest, but I don't know. He's got that North Manchester grit. When is he from like Moston or something? I don't know. I operate. I don't know. You know what them people like North Manchester are about, like? They don't mess about, do they? Um, should we move on to the women's team? This is another depressing story from the women's team. It's bad enough when Casey Stoney left because the facilities weren't up to scratch. And we were hearing stories about players having to walk 10 minutes or something stupid to use the bathroom or the toilet or whatever. Um, and now there's a, I think there's a story in The Athletic, I think it's from Adam Crafton, um, who says that um, United's women a team are to request advice, support from the PFA as they're exasperated, I do love that word, exasperated, uh, by the club's sluggish hunt for a manager and perceived lack of organisation ahead of the new season. This is a disgrace and a shambles. It really is. We had this big fanfare, didn't we, a few seasons ago when we announced we were having a women's team again and we're going to do our women's team and it's going to be great. We're going to have this, we're going to challenge, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then you get a manager in like Casey Stone and you get to the top flight and you're doing really well. And then it all just goes wrong because you're not showing the, due to, uh, the care and attention towards the women's team you should be. They haven't got the facilities. They haven't had the back in they should. It's not that difficult to do it properly. If you're going to have a women's team and you're Manchester United Football Club, supposedly one of the biggest clubs in the world, then you should be doing it the right way and we ain't. And the fact that the team have got to go to the PFA and ask for help and advice because they're exasperated by the club's actions is just farcical. Um, and everyone involved should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Not the women's team, but in, uh, from the club point of view. It's just Glazers again, in it? Not, not investing, not investing, not putting our money into the women's team, which is what they should be doing. Not just the first team, the men's team, but obviously the women's team as well. And the facilities and Old Trafford and all the rest of it instead of just furnishing the debt and giving themselves dividends. So we'll wait and see what happens with the PFA on that one. But it's just embarrassing. Um, finally, I'll just wrap it up with a nice little, well, Varane update. Um, there's not much to say on Varane that's not been said already. That's not going to stop me. Uh, Joe had it last night in his transfers live. Uh, he was talking about how Manchester United have been given permission to speak to Raphael Varane. Um, so that's a step forward. We know the figures are around £50 million ish mark. Um, different people, some people saying it's up to 70, some people saying it's as low as 40. So we'll wait and see what happens with that one. His contract's due to run out with Real Madrid. They want to get a deal done. After, well, I think they'd like to keep him, but they want to get money for him. He's open to a move to Old Trafford. So they've been given permission to speak to each other. Let's hopefully get that deal done because I think Raphael Varane, you know, the World Cup winning defender, the, the, the four times. Uh, Champions League winning defender would be an absolute star at Manchester United and would work very well with Harry Maguire who is tearing it up for England and hopefully will be tearing it up for England tonight you may not care about I do hopefully we'll beat Denmark uh, but regardless of that we'll be giving you all the updates from Manchester United so make sure you're hitting like share and subscribe hit the notification bell on the uh, subscribe thing as well so when we do have news we always go live to give you the latest updates and we'll do that uh, moving forward as well hopefully with news about Eduardo Camavinga choosing Manchester United over Chelsea this has been the paper talk I'm in Jay Marty. thanks for watching